Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is just quickly running over my method for drawing mountains uh, in a top-down map. So if you're looking at kind of a satellite view, looking straight down from above. Uh, and this is mostly going to be about shading and structure. But to start off with, I'm going to take a hard round brush. So that's this brush here. I said it's pressure to 100%. Uh, it's, sorry, it's opacity to 100%. It's pressure sensitivity depends on the pen pressure for the size of the brush. Have a look here, you can see it getting thicker as I press harder and lighter as I press less. Um, and the color I'm going to just set to be black. Okay, so I'm going to use this to define the ridge lines of my mountains. So let's start off just saying, well, I'm going to have a ridge which kind of runs up here uh, and kind of curves around because you know, we want most of this particular image to be a mountain range. So that's going to be the kind of the central ridge line. I'm going to have a couple of uh, little promontories which run off here. These mountain ranges tend to have offshoots that kind of run down into foothills. So that gives you kind of a following of how it's going to go. And now I'm going to pick a couple of these like sharp corners to be mountain peaks. So I'm going to show just quickly how the lines of those mountains bleed out. So this is kind of where the ridges of the mountain are as they run down. And then, you know, this one's a longer kind of ridge that comes down into the valley. So as you can see here, that kind of starts defining um, how, like, over time the waters eroded this mountain range, and you can see how it would have followed these routes down. If you have a look at kind of a set of satellite maps, you'll see this kind of pattern. Now, this is obviously heavily abstracted, and it's just kind of giving a sense of, of this. But you can see that would be quite a tight valley running down from the mountain peak, and this would be the ridge line running down to the ground. So it helps you just kind of pick out where these things go. And once we've defined the overall ridge lines, then we're going to start getting a feeling for uh, where we're going to need to put the light in the shade once we start getting that done. So uh, I'll just put in the rest of this a bit more quickly. So normally I'd be slightly more careful whilst doing this, but let's just get most of this kind of banged in so we've got an idea of where we're going. So there's another mountain here. So the peaks tend to be the bits where you have lots of lines coming off. And that will define the, uh, the highest points in the ridge. So let's put another one here and have that kind of breaking down. Obviously, the bigger mountain is going to have more detail kind of stretching out from it, so it dominates the landscape around it. Yeah, okay. You can see I'm not being particularly careful, so you get kind of a sense of... You don't really need to worry about being too careful just because you're going to... Um, you're going to be putting quite a lot of detail on top of this, and so any small mistakes you make now are going to disappear, or ideally they can just add to the general chaos. Uh, the real world isn't neatly delineated and doesn't have, like, doesn't really have any straight lines, so ideally you want straight lines to not really appear on your map, because they'd stand out like a sore thumb. Okay, so that was the uh, the general outline of the ridge structure. So you just because we put that ridge line in at the beginning, you can still see that this defines the overall shape of our mountain range. Um, but the like the wiggly lines that we draw and coming off it give kind of the expanse of the mountain range and the sense of cragged, uh, craggy, jagged mountain ranges. Okay, so that's that layer there. We're going to leave that layer alone, um, and I'm going to create another layer, put it underneath, and I'm going to call this light and shade. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is use an overlay layer. So I'm going to use a different hard round brush. This time, look at the brush dynamics. You can see that the transfer is ticked, but the shape dynamics are not ticked. So you can kind of see the um, the effect of the pressure sensitivity here. Now I'm going to just double up that pressure sensitivity. So that means that we've now got the uh, the sensitivity is due to the pen pressure. So you can do this with the mouse. You would just end up starting off with a much lower overall opacity and build it up in stages. But this way, rather than having to build up a dark color by kind of doing lots of light layers like this, and then going back over it again like this, and then back over it again like this, which is what you'd have to do with the mouse. Um, I can press light if I want a light texture, and then press hard if I want a, a dark color there, okay? So I'm just 
get rid of that. Okay, now I'm going to set the blend mode of this to overlay. This means that when I put in a dark color, rather than just putting in kind of black, you can see it now gives us, it darkens down the texture that exists on the map already. Uh, and it shows up the, uh, the underlying texture that's there rather than obscuring the underlying texture. Uh, okay, so we are going to assume that the light is coming kind of from this area here. Let me just kind of put you in a light source. So I always tend to take my light sources from the top left because it makes life easy because I'm right-handed. So this is the light. Yeah, okay, that was the worst possible size of brush I could use to write with, but you get the idea. Um, and then I'm going to just use the dark colors to start putting in an overall dark texture on the far side of the ridge. So I press it quite lightly because we're going to build this up in stages. If you press too hard to start off with, you'll be able to see the hard edges of the brush in the finished image. And that's not really what we want. You want it to, the brush to kind of take a back seat to all of this. You, just as you don't see like hard straight edges in the world, you don't see big circular edges uh, in the world either. So if your eye starts picking up the shapes of these brushes, then they're going to start seeing. You kind of, it, it breaks the illusion. It's like, uh, it defeats the purpose. Okay, so as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm just, for every ridge line I've got, I'm assuming that everything on the far side of the ridge line is darker. Um, so I can put in the shadows there. And also the shadows are going to be darkest right up towards the edge. Because basically what you think, if you think about it, uh, the steepest area is the area that's most shaded from the sun. So you're going to get the darkest shadows towards the top of your mountains. So this gives you kind of an idea of how that should look. Um, so basically every time I see a line like this, I know that the shadow has to sit here. And if I, and you, I'm trying to put the shadows so that they run along the edge of the extra lines that I've added, because that helps build up on what you've already kind of constructed. So you're helping at each layer, you're kind of enforcing the layer of detail you put in the last time round. So even though I put those in quite quickly and without much care, if I now follow the edges of them, then that's going to help kind of build up the structure of that, right, build up the illusion that there is a mountain ridge here. So I started off with this very big brush to get the overall kind of bulk light and shade in. And then with this smaller brush, I'm just going back over it all and adding a bit of detail following the smaller side lines that I built coming off the edge. Okay, And you can see that because it's an overlay layer, we're, we're picking up these kind of very rich browns uh, in the shadows. Now, there's not too much in mountain ranges which are kind of these rich browns. It's actually more of a gray, but we're going to handle that just a little bit later. Um, but be, you can see because the background texture was quite varied, it means that the um, the colors we're getting through are actually quite different between the different regions. So if, for example, I just put in a white layer here and set this to normal, you can see what I've actually built there. Okay, so this is what I've actually drawn. And if it was on a white background, this really doesn't look that great at all. Okay, it's just, it's a bit messy, it's kind of hard to read. But without that white layer, and with it set to overlay, it builds up a much more subtle kind of constructed mountain range. Right, so we've done our shadows. So let's build in some highlights because mountains also pick up highlights on their light side where the sun is striking them. These ones I'm going to go just a bit more subtle with. Um, they're not too extreme. I tend to like building my mountains up with shadows rather than with highlights. Um, and then once that's done there, just as before, I'm going to start putting in some kind of sharper little highlights just kind of running along the ridge lines. Because the, the, the sun's going to catch kind of loose rocks and the, the sharp edge at the top of your mountain range um, and just pick out those. Uh, and so it's kind of easier to just get small details with the highlights and pull those out around the camera shut up a bit and get these in quickly. Okay. 
Now the eye generally picks out the brightest part as being the closest to the viewer. So in that case, I'm going to, I'm picking out my, my kind of central mountains, these ones where we've got this nexus of, of points that create the longest ridge line. So I'm going to make those the brightest points on the map. Uh, and that helps just kind of pull the eye towards those and helps sell them a little bit. Um, and then, you know, with these kind of things, it's always worth, what's something worth doing once is also worth doing twice. Uh, and then I'm just going to add a bit of texture to it. So I'm picking up a, a nice grungy brush. You can have a look around the internet for a grunge brush, or you can uh, make your own. Uh, and then I'm just going to add a bit more on top. So because I'm using two layers, this is now pick, uh, building on top of the, the texture which was built up with the overlays beforehand. So I can kind of be a bit looser with this grungy brush because I'm not too worried about the all the detail in this case because a lot of the detail is already in place and I'm not going to get rid of that with this. Just adding to it rather than kind of writing over it. And I'm going to let that spill out into the surrounding land a bit. The reason my brush is so enormous in this case is just because um, it means I can press very lightly and because I've got both size and opacity keyed to the uh, the, uh, the pressure of the brush. A very light brush will be much smaller than you can see and also much lighter. Um, if I was being a bit more careful, I would, oh, well, I don't, I'll just bring the brush size, the brush opacity down because so I can work with my brush with just a bit more pressure. Okay, so you kind of see the uh, the shadows of the ridges being put in. You know, so that's meant kind of giving the much more kind of bulk structure of this mountain range. It bleed out into the surrounding area. Uh, I'll bring that back up just a little bit and put in some kind of darker shadows right along the ridge line. So a combination of a couple of overlay layers is just building up a bit more. Of texture and structure here uh, to sell the fact that this is a nice broken down mountain range, which is quite big. I mean, it's a formidable structure in the surrounding area. Okay, um, right, that's that. And then I'm going to just add a color layer. In this case, I don't want the colors to be particularly hard. Um, so I'm taking a, a big soft brush. So this is not going to give us any hard edges at all. I'm sticking with my black as the color. So what it's going to do here is this just defines the saturation. So if I did this, you can see it just turns that whole area into gray. And um, this is going to be a very rocky mountain range. So by running over the top of the peaks with my gray, it just pulls the saturation down along the top of the mountains. And that gives this kind of nice rocky feel to them in a barren wasteland. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, that's generally how I approach doing kind of a satellite mountain range. Uh, if we're talking about a map where you're going to be putting in individual forests and rivers and all the rest of it, then this is quite a nice way to build those up at that scale. If you have a much further out, uh, a much more zoomed out version where you wouldn't be able to see individual mountains, you'd just be able to see the range as a whole, um, then I've developed a different technique for that, but that's for a future tutorial. Hope that's useful.